Um, so of course, one of the things I just I was doing there. Um, remember, you could switch to your different modes, right? There's a lot of different modes in here that will either lighten or darken or even invert. Um, sometimes kind of drop out certain color values, like the lighter or darker values. Um, you can even play around with uh, adding, um, changing the color of something without getting necessarily getting rid of the pixels, right? There's some cool uh, blend modes here. Uh, I was just using a little bit of multiply right here with kind of a darker gray. Um, and as we see that that can just be a kind of a cool way to just kind of darken up some pixels that are already there. And I kind of already did that a little bit on the ship. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of briefly, you know, kind of reiterate that because, um, you know, I was recording that video and we kind of had to do something momentarily. Um, so you see how I can just kind of come in here and apply that, right? <coughs> so that was really just me going to multiply one of the blend modes here with a darker gray. And you can just add that. That's one of the things you could do to your color maps also, besides just applying some basic color or even painting with an image like stencil or stamp uh, or like stencil or view plane. You can also play with your blend modes, right? You can also play with your blend modes. So uh, just keep that in mind, right? That we have uh, those features that we could do. Um, whenever you've done anything to change it, you just go to image save or alt S, right? That's the quickie for it. All right, uh, so I did do a little bit of that earlier, and I just kind of, we had to stop the video, so I'm making a new one, and just kind of briefly pointing out that that's an option, right? Okay, uh, so at this point, what I really want to do is I want to show you how to make a different kind of map type, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, the uh, red sphere here, right, the red sphere, um, because things like base color and these other map types, we don't have to go through the whole shader network thing like we did for the normal map. Uh, it's because with the normal map, we wanted to plug in the intervening normal map node. That gave us control over strength. Uh, it just gives us more control over it, right? We can adjust the intensity of the normal map, so it's kind of neat. Um, but the other map types, you can actually usually do through here, right? Um, even though you can technically go through your shading workspace as well, right? But you see how the color map is just plugged in simply. It was the normal map wanting this intervening node that made us kind of approach that. But right from the texture paint workspace, you can just go right to your red sphere, and you'll see that there are several properties below our color, right? Uh, in particular, what interests us is things like metallic and the roughness control. So I'm going to turn up metallic slider. And you see as I turn that up, you see how it actually starts to kind of look like it's got some shininess to it, right? Now, I've got material preview working. Um, if you're not, you're probably going to have to use just kind of your, the normal color painting workflow you've been working with and just kind of paint grayscale, right? Um, you can always turn on this render right here to see it, but you'd have to kind of switch to uh, maybe cycles, probably turn your light on so you can see light on your surface, right? Um, I'm going to turn that back to uh, material preview there. But I also did want to go back up to the uh, kind of rendering controls right here, right? It's that little microwave and switch my rendering engine back to Eevee because then I get some controls in here like uh, bloom, right? which particularly when we have a light on, you see how it kind of uh, uh, makes it uh, kind of have the shininess kind of actually um, go into a really, really bright spectrum of uh, brightness, right? Kind of a light value, right? Um, so you can see there is a difference between bloom being off and on when you have a light source available, right? Um, it just kind of gives you that extra little bit of um, the uh, shininess kind of... Uh, going into a brightness range that's kind of um, higher than normal, right? Um, but also what we can do is we can turn screen space reflections on. And what that'll do is that'll actually kind of show the um, kind of, it's not ray trace reflections, it's kind of using it based more on just the camera, the, the way the view is actually looking at it. So it's, it's actually decent reflection, um, but it's not as accurate as ray trace would be. Uh, but we do have support for that. So if you go back to this little, uh, like I said, the kind of briefcase thing up here, switch your rendering engine back to Eevee. Um, for some of you, is with Mature Preview, that's probably what's giving you an issue is Eevee. Um, and just the, the, the graphics cards aren't good enough. Um, but with Eevee on, you get options like being able to turn on Bloom and screen-based reflection. Now, with those on, I can go back to uh, kind of my red sphere here because uh, I was turning up metallic. And you see if I keep turning it up, it'll get even more and more reflective, right? So 
kind of cool. You have this ability to kind of turn up your reflectivity on your mesh um, just through your metallic property, right? Um, and with screen-based reflections on, you can kind of see it reflect some of the environment around it. Um, also, turn on some of the other things like pipes. You might see those pipes reflected on the surface more. Um, we can go to the screen-based uh, reflection options here to adjust those if we want to. Um, but those are just kind of cool things to be aware of um, as we're working. Uh, that can give us some extra neat little options for that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that red ball. Um, but in this case, we're turning metallic up or down because that's going to give us the overall metallic property. right? If we can go full on, like one or really close to one. But if I go a few down, there's an area called roughness. right? Roughness. This is my preferred way usually if I'm trying to just have less maps controlling the shininess of an object, the metallic of an option, because you can actually technically paint maps for all the channels. But if I don't want like a million texture maps, and I'm just kind of looking for the simplest way to control the amount of metallic, um, roughness is not a bad way to go about it, right? Technically, you can, of course, paint a roughness and a metallic map to get even more nuance. But, you know, we're trying to keep this simpler. Um, so I found if you're going simpler, roughness will still work pretty well. Um, what this controls is the actual shininess of this. You notice I've got metallic turned up pretty far as a slider. But if I turn roughness down, you see how you actually start to see that reflection a lot more? Right? You see how that reflection starts to pop out a lot more? And if I turn screen space reflection on, you see how it actually still is pretty good without it? But you will notice when it's on, you do get a bit of reflection from the other stuff on the model. Right? So remember, part of controlling these things is roughness, right? Um, the lower the roughness, the smoother the mesh is, the more it's going to reflect. So you see if I turn roughness up pretty high, you see how we can almost get rid of the metallic quality? So the nice thing is these are kinds of things you can actually do without even creating a texture because you can do things just with your material, right? But one of the things I really want to show you is that you can paint these other map types. See how everything has a dot? That means you could paint it just like the color map. So I could go to roughness, click on the gray dot, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different than the color one. But if you actually go up and you kind of go up to the top of the menu here, because there's a lot more things you can actually plug this map type into, but you'll see if kind of when you click on that roughness, it gives you a lot more, right? But you see these little triangles at the top and bottom? If you move your cursor over them, it can actually go back up to the top. And you'll see that there is an image texture, just like last time. There we go. And then you see how it brings this stuff up. And I can click on New. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, Roughness. Ship, ship Rough or something Roughness. And I'll make the um, map type a little higher. 2048, right? 2048. There we go. Uh, Blank is fine. Um, in this case, the default color is not going to matter that much because we're going to go and paint it uh, more. Um, the colors are usually inverted. Uh, it depends on what map type you're painting, but sometimes black will be 0% of something. Sometimes white will be 0%. It kind of depends on the map. <coughs> so I'm just going to leave the uh, color map at, um, I think I'm going to do mid-gray, just so I'm kind of in the middle. So click on the color slider there. Uh, click on this to go up to maybe mid-gray. Hit OK, and now you see how it actually plugs a map into the roughness channel, right? There's now actually a map in there, right? Now, in this case, uh, like I said, usually, particularly since um, we don't have B-Painter here, you're probably going to want to go back up to here in your 2D view. Uh, click on this little kind of triangle dot one. There's ship roughness. That now it's available. Remember, you can also go back uh, to uh, the brush menu here, right? The, the um, That's your uh, tool properties, right? It's the uh, wrench and screwdriver. Now, right now, we're not seeing the other map type yet because usually you kind of need to do something to this map, right? Make sure it's uh, here. Uh, go to image, save. And what we could do is we could uh, just, it's going to use ship roughness, so I'll just hit save as image. And now you see once we've actually created that image, made sure it's the active one here, saved it, right, image save, you'll see you can actually now see it here as part of our tool properties, which makes it really easy to switch between our map types. 
Now in this case, this mid-gray is a little too rough, right? Remember, one of the things we could actually do is use our fill bucket, right? There is the fill bucket, right? And I'm going to pick a darker color. So I'm going to go darker black, fill bucket. I'm going to click in here. And in this case, I think we actually want to go uh, lighter. So I'll go back here and go lighter. And why are we not seeing that? Oh, I know why. Uh, go to the shading workspace. Uh, this happens too often when you plug it in from there. I always, I always forget because I'm so used to using B Painter. Um, you'll notice that once I've created this, when we go to shading workspace, right? There's our color. There's our normal map. There's that normal map node. You notice how you can click on any one of these and just left click drag to move it. You will notice the reason why we're not seeing shiny effects here is that even though it's plugged into roughness, you notice how it's using the alpha, right? Not the color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click drag on um, kind of this uh, right here to unplug that. And then I'm gonna grab on the color, right? The yellow dot color, left click drag. And I'm going to plug that into roughness. And then you can actually see the effect. So if you create it through ma the material preview, I've often found it actually uses the alpha instead of the color. And we really want the color. Uh, but remember, you can go in here and you can unplug stuff and then plug in the right channel. In this case, for this, the ship roughness, I wanted the color, yellow dot, to plug in the roughness. So this is what's cool about the shader uh, workspace, is you get to see your material and all the little kind of packets of information that plug into the different areas. So I'll go back to texture paint. Now we can see that's maybe a little less rough than I wanted to. So I'll go back to maybe mid gray. And so I can just kind of fill bucket this major texture. But here's the thing. You could paint all this stuff as well. I can go back to my paintbrush here. And I can go in and say, you know what? Where this kind of has that um, rougher area, I can go back in here and I could say, hey, let's paint uh, maybe black. And you see how that actually paints the uh, shininess to be even shinier, right? Now, remember, you could paint these, but you could also, so I'll go back to white, because white in this case is going to be off. And you see when I go into your paint, it kind of paints out that. Now, remember, though, you can go to three for face mode. And I could select just kind of these right here, right? And maybe these bottom ones as well, right? Shift left click, shift left click. Remember, you could always do select linked linked. In this case, I'll probably expand one, right? Up arrow just to grow that selection out a little bit on the bottom. And that's just three for face selection mode. If I go back to eight for texture mode, remember you could turn on this little button right here. It's like a white square with a kind of invisible square behind it. If I click on that, you'll notice it now shows just, uh, it's kind of grayed out everything else but those faces that are selected. And that means if I want to, I can use fill bucket with a white color to not have shininess on those at all. And actually, I think no shininess is not what I wanted. So I'll go with a light white. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit lighter than that. There we go. And you said we still get a bit of kind of shininess there, but it's really low level. There's a lot of roughness. So we're getting a very, uh, very matte kind of shininess going on there. So this is one of those neat things that you can actually do as you're working is you can come in and paint more or less shiny scenarios. So I go to my brush area here, right? And if I want to, maybe I want to make these ones shinier. I could go to kind of black. I'm going to turn my strength up quite high. And I could paint in a lot of shininess right here, right? So you'll notice that you can go in here and paint these maps in here to make areas more or less shiny. You could use your fill bucket, masking menus, just like a normal color map. Because really, at the end of the day, this is just a color map. We're just painting in grayscale, right? White is uh, no reflection, no shininess. Black is full shininess. And any value of gray from dark gray will be a lot of shininess to light gray will be a little shininess. We'll let you actually paint this, right? And this is one of those neat things is that you have that ability to actually come in here and say, I want it to be more shiny here and less shiny here. Right? And that might be a little too much shininess, but I'm really just trying to get you guys to see the kind of spectrum from very low to kind of middle to quite shiny. Right? 
I think I'll even go in here, maybe make the window a little shinier. So I can go in here and I could uh, have the face there, right? Select, linked. I can hit an eight, right? Turn that one on, right? That's your mask view. I go right back to fill bucket again. And actually, we want a, a, a dark black to get it quite shiny. And we can turn that off. And you see how we could have some shininess here? Less shininess there, more shininess here. And now we've kind of got this looking a little more like a ship, right? It's got kind of some metal look to it. But it varies in the different areas. Now, as we've been painting, we just want to go back to image, save, so that we're actually saving that image stuff we've done. Remember, if I go to file here, I do have external data automatically pack resources. So that way it's actually packing these textures into the Blender file. So I'll just save my Blender file also. Control S, just as normal save. And now you can see we've painted metalness, right? Roughness. Now the cool thing is you can go back to your different map types from right here to paint them, right? You can also kind of view them from right here as well, uh, particularly if you want to see them in the UV editor. And that image menu is where you're going to be able to kind of save it, right? Uh, like I said, we'll kind of do a glow map uh, later on in the week, just so we can do some glow in some areas, because the spaceship is probably going to have some glow on it too. But unlike our last project, where we just kind of used the material settings to give us shininess and glow, I wanted to show you that you can actually paint those map types. But you notice how it's just normal painting, right? All the things we learned on color maps apply to it, right? You could paint with textures if you wanted to. Right? You can paint with blend modes. Um, so you can absolutely kind of paint just like a normal color map, except we're not painting color this time. We're painting uh, shininess, right? metallic, right? more or less. And it depends on the ve color value. Dark is going to be quite shiny. White is not going to be shiny at all. Uh, that can be inverted for other map types. So it's not. It's sometimes it'll be inverted, depending on the map type. right? Uh, so just be aware of that, right? that sometimes you might invert that, where black is transparent, white's not, right, kind of thing. But painting other material properties is really just color map painting, except you're using that color map to control a different material channel. In this case, the roughness or our shiny property, right? Roughness is generally related to uh, metallic and specular, which are controlling the shininess of the object. Uh, metallic specifically um, kind of uh, takes the color of the actual um, mesh into consideration a little bit and kind of the light. So it, it has a slightly different shiny property than regular specular. So if when you're looking to do more metals, metallic. If you're looking to do like more of a shiny plastic, um, specular, right? Uh, those controls can kind of give you those different properties as well. Because um, metallic shininess kind of tends to take in to there's a little more contrast to the visual look. Um, the color of the shininess will kind of take on uh, a lot of the colors that are already there. Uh, where specular, it's kind of more or less like a, a white highlight. Um, all right. So I figure that's kind of a good place to stop there. All right.